Hi there, I'm Pacey Unwaloff, Webcast Live, and I'm here to talk to you today about how you and I can set up a live event webcast. I'll be speaking about what I would need to do and what you would need to do and the workflow involved in doing that. Now, how many times have you been stuck watching a live webcast with a boring talking head video with no visual relief and no other graphics or visuals whatsoever? Nothing to reinforce what the presenter is droning on and on about. Or how about those uh, so-called videos that have a single PowerPoint slide stuck on screen for minutes at a time while a faceless voice rambles on and on reading off every line of text on the screen. Now these types of broadcasts, they're not only ineffective, but they're downright off-putting. The human mind needs a constant stimulation to maintain any level of interest, especially when the content under discussion is very dry or technical or academic, and if the event is going on for hours and hours at a time. To be able to communicate effectively with video, especially when it's to an internet audience, it is vital that we show not just the presentation, but also the presenter, thereby providing visual relief at regular intervals. And this can and should be done by intermittently switching screens, camera angles, and of course by illustrating important information with graphics. This involves more than your typical single camera webcast that does nothing for your viewing audience. And that's what I'm going to talk about here. The workflow involved in setting up a multi-camera professional and compelling webcast. I will show not only what I would do as your webcast provider, but I'll also list your responsibilities and tasks as the client. So let's get to it. The first step is to capture all the audio, the video and the multimedia. Here we have the presenter and to capture it, the first step is the audio. Now we can have multiple microphones, one mic obviously for the speaker, one mic could be for the panel or multiple mics for the panel if there is one. And of course there could be one or more microphones for the audience to record the audience, uh, audience reaction or any questions they might have. All these audio channels lead into a single mixer, uh, an audio mixer. And that could be a mixer which is uh, owned by the hotel or whichever venue is holding the, web, uh, the, the event or we could bring that along as well. The second element is the video cameras. Now you can have one, two, three, as many video cameras as you like. Uh, the reason for having more video cameras is one is for the speaker, obviously. One could be a close-up of the speaker, another for the panel. There could be another for the audience, especially when the audience needs to come up to a mic and ask questions. And of course, lastly, you have the PowerPoint or a presentation on the speaker's or the presenter's laptop. Now, all these three elements have to be captured and fed into a switcher, a live video switcher. This is like an audio mixer, but it's for video. And it's a very specialized piece of equipment that allows us to switch between different cameras, to switch between the PowerPoint and the, and the camera, a uh, video camera, uh, provide a picture in picture or multiple screens, etc. And that finally takes the stream, the final output stream, the mixed stream, through a router and onto the internet. When it goes onto the internet, it doesn't go to just about any old server on the internet. It goes to a very special server called a real-time streaming server or RTMP server. Now what this does is it allows us to stream video live in real time while it's happening as opposed to the other servers which you're not you're more familiar with which just allow you to download a video and play it on your computer. This plays the video while it is actually streaming live from our event venue. The second element you need to consider here, and that's very important, is something called ABR streaming. What ABR stands for is adaptive bitrate. Now what adaptive bitrate does is, uh, let me explain a, a, a little bit. You can have one of your viewing audience watching the webcast on a nice broadband high-speed internet connection, which is fine but th because then your stream will play really smoothly for them. You have someone else, however, who may be out of town or in the boonies somewhere watching it on a dial-up or even a satellite uh, connection, which is far slower. Now, if you provide the same high-speed internet stream to them, their video will be very jerky, it will buffer a lot, it will, it will stop and start, and they won't, be, they won't have a good viewing experience. 
What the ABR server does is it automatically recognizes each viewer's stream and sees exactly what it should feed to which viewer. So the ones which have a dial-up connection will be fed a slower stream, which will allow them to stream it much more smoothly. Of course, the resolution will be a bit lower, but that doesn't matter. At least the stream will be smooth, and that's what's most important. And of course, the people with the high-speed streams will have a proper full resolution stream going to them because they don't have a problem streaming. And that's where the ABR is a really handy uh, tool. From the streaming server, of course, now it goes to the website which holds the player, and that's your regular RT, uh, HTTP server, which is your regular website. From the website, then you can stream now to offices, to homes, to any mobile device, uh, iPhones, iPads, uh, Android phones, and of course, anywhere in the world. After all, it is the internet, so geography doesn't make a difference. Uh, I just did a, a live webcast of a funeral service, for example, where the viewing audience was watching in Fiji. And we were broadcasting from here in Vancouver. And they could watch the entire proceedings without a problem. So this is what they would see. The viewer, the end viewer, all they would need to do is go to the address, the web address you send them, or that I would send you to send them, and they would see something like this. It would be a, a video screen. There, would, there could be a chat screen online, and all they would need to do is access that web page. There needn't be any password protection or any login unless you want that, uh, and any old browser will do, and of course, it is platform independent, so it could be a Mac or a PC. It could be Chrome or Safari or Internet Explorer or, uh, or uh, Firefox or whatever, whatever browser the person's using. And that should not make a difference. We can add, even add some customization and additional features. For example, we can customize this web page. Now, the web page that you're seeing here is something that I would be able to broadcast your video on for free, but then it would have my branding. Now, I could customize a web page to look exactly like your website with your own header and your own uh, logo, etc. I could even create a full mini display website for you, uh, like a two-page website, which is really inexpensive to make and which would stream it and it would have the the, the customization built exactly according to your specifications. We could password protect that website and we could have a single password for all your viewers or we can have a unique password for each viewer. That of course is done using a database driven website because to have a unique password for each viewer you need a database to drive that, that feature. Skype integration. Let's say one of your presenters is unable to attend. Well, all they need to do is get onto Skype, and we can capture that Skype and show it on screen live while it's happening, while they're presenting. Interactive chat online. The, the little bit you see at the bottom over here, right here, that's an interactive chat screen. So your viewing audience can ask questions online in real time, of course, and the event moderator can then pass those questions along to the presenter, who would then be able to answer them live in real time as the people are watching? You can have an archival copy of the video. That's, of course, uh, free of charge, and that's always done because uh, while we are broadcasting, we're also simultaneously saving that video. However, if you do need to capture that video for post-production later on, as in you wanted to use it for uh, a commercial or something, then the video needs to be captured in a slightly different format and if you can let us know beforehand we can capture it in that format for you because there is a little bit of a difference in the in the kind of connections and the technology we need to put in place dvd authoring let's say that you want a dvd of your event of the entire event we can create that for you which you can either give, uh, give away free or you can even sell it powerpoint slide design I've noticed that quite many, many presenters have terrible PowerPoints. It's a white screen with loads of text on it, just text, text, and more text. And really, that does nothing for your viewing audience. A PowerPoint presentation 
should be more graphical. It should be an adjunct to your presentation rather than the presentation itself. So you need to include graphics, a nice custom background, which is soothing to the eye, nothing very jarring, uh, a good header, uh, maybe the logo, etc. And that makes your presentation far more interesting and far more uh, user uh, viewer friendly. Digital slide capture versus camera. Now, very often you see a webcast where the presentation on screen is captured by pointing a video camera at the screen. This is a terrible way to capture any presentation because now you have a video off a video and the resolution is degraded terribly. The best way to capture a, an on-screen presentation is to capture it digitally and that's what we do. We capture it direct from the presenter's laptop into our switcher and that digital capture is sharp and clear just like you see over here. An extra camera or a, a mobile cameraman. Very often uh, you have a camera up front which you which I could not uh, control because I'm at the back doing the production side of it. Well that that's where an extra cameraman can point the camera at different people in the audience, can swivel the camera, can capture audience reactions, close-ups. He can he or she could be mobile and move around during the event capturing different aspects of the event. Now this doesn't isn't very uh, this isn't used very often, but it's something worth thinking about if you need to. Here's where the extra cameraman would come in handy. If you have a look at the, the camera up in front over there, uh, the one on top, you'll notice that we have three microphones, let's say for three sections of the audience, and this has happened before. The person who is sitting at the bottom, which would be me producing the uh, event, would not be able to control that camera up top. You would then need an extra cameraman to then swivel and pan the camera at different parts of the audience and different microphones to capture their reactions. This is a typical room layout for uh, audience interactions. You have the presentation screen, you have the, the, fir the first two cameras at the bottom at the main computer station. We generally place that behind the audience so we don't uh, interfere with the audience or get in the way. And of course you have that extra third camera, if you like, up top with an extra person manning the camera. Of course, if you had just the one camera over there, you would not need an extra cameraman. We could then control that from our computer station directly. Now, this is very important. This is what you as a client need to provide. And uh, there's a lot of work for you to do here. No, I'm just kidding. It's basically you need to provide us with an internet connection, a, a broadband internet connection, wired, not wireless preferably, because wireless you can get uh, dropouts. Uh, this is done simply by informing the hotel staff or the, or the event venue that we need an internet connection and they just provide one. The second thing, of course, very important, we need power. And that's just a single wall switch. Uh, we don't need anything very uh, special. Just your regular wall power will do. And this is very easily pro uh, pro provided by you with a single phone call to the event venue staff. So you just call up the event venue staff, tell them you'll need a broadband connection and power at the back of the room, and that's it. Give us the contact of the AV technician at the venue. We will then uh, call them and we will d decide what and where and how we should uh, set this whole thing up and what we need them to do. So basically, you don't have to do anything except make that one phone call. And that's about it. So that's it for today. And uh, this is what I wanted to talk about. It's that easy to set up your webcast. Basically, we do all the work. You just make that one phone call and then you leave everything to us and you focus on then running your event the way you would want to run it. Well, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, do visit my website at webcastlive.mediastreams.ca and my phone numbers are there. You can just give me a call directly and if you like, we can sit down and talk about how we can set up your next live webcast.